come back to Stoke. You must, you must have, you must have done so well up there because you come back to Stoke, get getting regular minutes. You end up earning yourself earning yourself a contract extension as well, and and then be becoming a fan's favourite among, amongst the fans. You must have been so pleased that from going from hating Iceland for for two <laughs> weeks to to then to then coming back and 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 earning yourself a contract extension at a big club like Stoke. Yeah, a massive achievement for myself. Um, like I said, I was just happy that I was able to to kick on and and get the chance and at that time take it, which led me to to getting a, a contract extension and you know just like you say, enjoying it, just being part of Stoke City um, and trying to prove myself, just show people that I could do it. Yeah, talk about the fans as well, Carl. I mean, the amount of times that you, you, you like, I, I mean, I, unfortunately, I've never managed to go to the Britannia, but like, you just he, even hear him. Bet, hear, bet 365 now. Yeah, I mean, everyone, I still, I everyone still knows it. it. Everyone I, knows I only it. know it. I only know it as the Brit. But... Yeah. And and to be fair, I don't think the Stoke fans, when they watch this, are going to curse me for it <laughs> either. <laughs> but yeah. even, even hearing it on telly, how is it when you walk out at, at the Brit, like, and it must make the, the hair stand up on the back of your neck, surely. You've literally took the words right out of my mouth. It's yeah. it's the only place I've been, uh, possibly Ellen Road when I played there, but, but nothing compares to that place. I've, I've walked out of the, the tunnel there on a number of times, and it's it's insane. I honestly can't describe it. It's You feel like nothing can touch you. It is, right. it is that powerful. It literally makes the hair stand up on the back of your neck. It is any kick, any header, any tackle, anything is just amplified. Um, yeah, I, I, I must admit, I, I'm quite a lucky lad to be able to play uh, with a set of fans like that because um, I'm not sure many people get the chance to, to have the raw that that stadium had with that set of fans. Yeah. Yeah, you enjoyed success as well with Stoke in 2007 to 2008 season, of course, finished second and got promoted to the Premier League. Now, you know, that's really up there with, with what achievements you can achieve as a player. That that must have been so great a feeling at the time for yourself, surely. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was the best, best day I've had in football. Um, not only that, the, the set of lads we had at the time, the group we had, the staff, everything. Um, the way we as a team uh, and a set of fans connected together um, is, is something that um, not really had like that since. Um, not to that level anyway, uh, but... No, to, to, to be involved in, in something like that, it's still a young age, I think I was 20, 21 that season. Um, to be part of a special group like that and to be able to say I was in that group that achieved that is um, is something I'm very proud of. And yeah, something I definitely won't forget. Yeah, you talked there about being you know such a special group of players to get promoted with. Did, was there always that belief within yourselves that you'd get promoted right from the very beginning? Yeah, we we knew in the in the group that we had that obviously at the time we might we might not have the the best footballers on paper, but we knew we had a, a togetherness, a spirit, a work ethic that um, a lot of teams probably wouldn't have. Uh, and and the gaffer Sonny Pulis, he he instilled that into us. And I don't think we were predicted to get anywhere near the top half. I don't think that season. But we knew between ourselves that if we stuck together uh, and we were difficult to play against, we had players that could could, could hurt teams. And it, it proved that way that season. So, um, yeah, like I said, a special, special group, not just in terms of uh, the type of players we had, but the type of people. Yeah, we, we always talk about whenever there's a, a promotion story, sort of a turning point, sort of a real moment where everybody can sort of say, yeah, you know, we could really go on and achieve something special here. What, what was your turning point in that season where where you really had the belief? Um, for me, 
it was probably two games um, just after Christmas, possibly getting towards the end of the season. Played Coventry away. Um, and before the game, Gaffer had played as, um, you know, the Al Pacino speech. Uh, yeah. Done, yeah some the, uh, so he played as that before we went out. And wow. Liam Lawrence, Liam Lawrence scored a winner. And we come in after after the game, sat in the changing room, and we all just looked at each other. And for me, then I think I think you ask a few lads that are involved in that. I think then we we kind of knew that, yeah, we can we can do this here. And then I think it was after that we played Bristol City at home live on Sky. Bristol City at the time were in and around us. Um, and I think we beat them it was two or three one at home. And then when we came back in after that, I think that was it where we thought, yeah. This is this is ours to lose now. Um, yeah, I mean, you mentioned your, your gaffer Tony Pulis there, of course. That speech he played to you. What, what was your what was your relationship like with him? We had a great relationship. Um, I I owe everything to that man. He he gave me my chance in football. Um, so yeah, I've got nothing but great things to say about him. He looked after me, um, especially. Uh, the promotion season, I'd lost, I lost my dad in the October of that season. Um, but him, him, whole of Stoke City Football Club were absolutely different class with me and my family. Um, yeah, he just, he looked after me. Don't get me wrong, he, he let me know if he wasn't happy with anything. Um, but no, he was just, he was just good to you, not only as a player but as a person as well. And I think that's the that's the highest compliment I can give him. Yeah, I mean, do you have any stories you can share with us from uh, following that uh, that promotion? Oh God, uh, there's probably a few I can't remember. Put it that way. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, no, it's probably just the um, the parade day. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think. Uh, <laughs> It was just like we obviously go around all the town centre and everything, don't you? But at that time, we didn't know that there was going to be a load of fans back at the stadium, welcoming us back at the stadium. So we got back and half the stadium or three quarters of the stadium was full. Oh, wow. So we thought we were just getting back from the coaches from the town centre to just finish the evening kind of thing. But we got back there and to see the stadium like that and just sort of be able to do a walk around the pitch and thank everyone. Um, that sticks out in my mind a lot. Uh, don't get me wrong, there's obviously the, the night out after and yeah. drinks you have and the party you have, etc. But um, no, in terms of the stories that stick out in my mind, that's that's a big one. I mean, to be honest, Kyle, just looking for the squad that you were in that year and you mentioned, obviously, Liam Lawrence, who, who played a big part, and then you, Richard Cresswell, Ricardo Fuller, Mama Sadibi, Ryan Shawcross. Like, you, you look back at those names and you think, well... Danny Pugh, there's like there's probably no wonder like you you went and got promoted because but at the time you probably thought we're just a we're just a normal set of lads that that stuck together and achieved something special. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think uh, even at the start of that season, <laughs> the, uh, John Eustace was playing for us, yeah. um, and he he got sold to Watford, who were flying at the time, um, and we bought in Glen Wheeler, um, and. Glenn Williams, different class. Uh, yeah, he come in and literally hit the ground running. Um, but I don't think it mattered who come in. We had, like I said, because we had that togetherness and that bond, we literally did did everything together. Um, you know, we'd we'd go out for meals during the week with girlfriends, wives, etc. We were literally just one big tight knit group. And I think because we were that close, that that. Um, that spread onto the pitch. I think, I think pretty much every time when you see teams that have done really well, their dressing room's usually really good. Yeah. Because um, yeah. if it's not, you can you can tell. Yeah. Um, yeah. Stories come out one way or another, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can tell. But um, no, we had we had some really good lads, um, and yeah, it, it it just seemed to all click. And 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 that's probably the most important thing, isn't it? Is that as well as being good players on it, it was it was probably so important that there was that the boys that you had in that dressing room were good people as well. Yeah, definitely. But um, 
and they just had high standards as well. Um, so come training days, if, if somebody weren't on it, bang, someone had let someone know, whether it be a chat or a tackle. <laughs> um, this is how we were. We trained. Coming trained, from you. Trained. Well, <laughs> I, tackle I mean, tackle I was, probably coming from you, wasn't it? <laughs> I was just like that anyway, kind of thing. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it was just one of them. It was, yeah. the, the standards weren't set. Nobody let anybody get away with anything. And the way that the gaffer drilled us as well, how organised we were, um, the amount of work we do on training, set plays. Uh, we were so organised that come match day, you didn't know just your job, you knew people's jobs at certain set plays. So if somebody did switch off for a second, it was, right, bang, you're in here, done. Um, and like I said, everything just seemed to click. I mean, the following year, obviously in the big time, in the Premier League, I mean, how was the preparation that summer leading up to the, the big campaign? It must have been nothing... It must have been nothing like you'd ever expected it to, to to be. It must have been, yeah, big big preparation. Yeah. Um, well, I think Tony Pulis's pre seasons are quite renowned around <laughs> football. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, we yeah the pre season always ridiculous with him. So <laughs> so tough. But he, if there was one thing that. Uh, Stoke City side was under him it was fit uh, and he would get the lads ultra fit uh, and they'd be, he'd be at the top of the hills when you were running up the hills screaming you might not be the best team but you'd be the fittest <laughs> and yeah he, he put you through it but it wasn't just working on you physically it was working on you mentally as well Yeah, because you'd be running up that hill and hearing shouting and you'd be kind of swearing to yourself going up the hill going right show you kind of thing <laughs> uh, it's only now when I do get a bit older that you realise he was testing you mentally um, but yeah he just he just made sure that everything he never went away from his, his principles and his values um, it was more kind of I suppose if anything the the organisation into working on other teams was probably more intense uh, and how we were going to combat against the, the so-called bigger teams and how that was going to come across. Yeah, what was the expectations that year? I mean, like, was it was it kind of just, just go out just go out and enjoy yourself and, and do what you can or...? Oh, no, not not under not under Pulis, no. He wanted to win. Yeah? He wanted to win. I mean, uh, <laughs> we got spanked first game of the season <laughs> away at Bolton. And I think Paddy Power paid out on us to get relegated that day. Wow. Yeah. Um, so that was something he stuck up in the changing room. Did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, wow. And what, how did you react to the players when you saw that? Uh, it, it was almost like a gone then. Let's have it. Yeah. Um, and that was it then. Uh, so, yeah, we'd... we'd Lost to Bolton and then we played Aston Villa, first home game of the season. Yeah. So uh, I'd think I'd, I'd come on as a sub against Bolton. Mm -hmm. uh, I was lucky enough to to set our goal up for Ricardo. Um, and then the first home game, I uh, managed to get a start uh, against Villa, who um, their squad at the time was brilliant under Martin O'Neill. Um, so they had, God, Luke Young. Ashley Young, Petrov, Ria Coca. Milner. Was that Yeah, yeah. 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 All yeah. of them players. So, yeah, walking out with them was like, uh, oh, man, that's nice. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, I think we scored 93rd minute or something like that. Uh, Sadibi, I think one of Rory's special thrones, I think Mama on the back went in. Yeah, uh, I, I mean... I mean, he's he's one of my cult heroes, to be honest, Big Mama, because I'm a Jules fan. So, oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I love him. I love him dearly. <laughs> he's honestly one of the nicest men I've ever met in football. He's yeah. he's some me, some bloke. Um, worked tirelessly because he pretty much did most of Ricardo's running for him. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, what a, what a great human being. Um, yeah. I still see him sometimes now. He's because um, him and my lad are at Stokes Academy, 
his lads in the older age group. So I often sometimes see him, and he's always got the biggest smile on his face as he usually. Yeah, does. always did. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you made you made three appearances, and then and then it was a it was a loan move for you to Leeds United. How did that move come about, and why why the loan move out out, out of Stoke? Um, so after the third game I played in, which was away at Middlesbrough, it was coming to the end of the transfer window. And the gaffer had brought back in Danny Higginbottom, uh, who, brilliant player. Brilliant player, great career spent. I think he spent yeah, pretty much all of his career in the top flight. Um, but he come back and we had... Andy Wilkinson as well, who could play left back. And it was him and Andy Griffin who were playing right back with Andy Wilkinson, but they could also play left back. So time was never, I was probably never going to play much anyway, considering the signings that were coming in, especially with me being 21 still at a time, um, which I was perfectly fine with that. Um, I was just happy to be involved with the team that was in the <laughs> Premier League. Yeah. Um, but in terms of the, the 